Greetings. This is Brian. Hey, Brian. Nice to meet you. Thank you for coming. This is my I'm Max. How can I'm I? Max. Yep. Um, so, um, as I read the biography of uh, of the Beatles, apparently your in input was very, very, um, very important. And I think um, the fact of their success is very largely due to your engineering and uh, and uh, yeah. design of their image. Well, the thing is about that is that they were there. All the conditions were right for them. Everything was right for them. I could see that uh, people were, they loved what, how they looked. They loved how they sounded and they loved their energy and their, uh, they loved their sense of humor. There were so many things about the Beatles that were so positive and interactive with people. Um, and they were at the right place at the right time in history. No one else could have done what they did. And yes, I could see that. I could see that they were poised to be a fabulous, in a fabulous place. I could never have imagined the success that they had, but I knew that they were going to be successful everywhere they went the people were very accepting of them. Everywhere they went, their sense of humor and their sense of style was very accepted. And so I could see that there was success in their future. As great as their success was, I could not see that. But yes, they did listen to me because I did have experience. And plus the fact um, I wasn't demanding. Um, there, there's some very strong personalities here. Uh, Paul is a very, very strong personality. Uh, John is a very strong personality. George in himself is, and Ringo were less strong personalities, but still very strong personalities when it came to musical expression. So I was dealing with very strong people here. These, all of them had a great deal of talent. And so I had to be, I had to speak correctly to them. I couldn't boss them around. That is not the way to handle uh, John and Paul. They would not, they would say, uh, be on your way, bugger off, as they would have said at that time. They would say, uh, you, you need to bugger off. But the thing is, I said, listen carefully. You guys have a lot of talent. You need to bring it into, uh, you need to practice and bring this all into a nice unity. You are going to be successful if you listen to each other and to me, because I see that your future is bright, but don't fight among yourselves. That's not going to be, uh, that's not going to work. And that, that's when John and Paul got together about their writing. No matter who wrote the song, they both take, took the credit. Do you, do you know that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, uh, it, there, it, you won't find a song in the Beatles just written by John Lennon. And you won't find a song in the Beatles just written by Paul McCartney because they were, they were the, the big talents. They were the big writers. They were very, very, uh, they were always a creative, uh, they were always coming up with something. So, I, the, so they merged. So if you wrote most of it, Paul would add a little bit over here. If Paul wrote something, John would add a little bit over there. And, you know, and George and Ringo would also bring their bit into it. And, and George also was a writer. And uh, uh, Ringo, Richard, I should say, was um, less of a writer than any of them, but was a wonderful drummer. Uh, but, um, yes, so many things I could tell you about their 
beginnings. There was just a really uh, tumultuous but beautiful time in, 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 at the same time. They were, uh, they were young, they were rowdy, but they were also, uh, they also could see, uh, especially John and Paul could see that they could be successful. And so the, they, as the leaders of the group, were, uh, were saying, yes, let's get this together. Let's, let's do this. So it was easier to help them because they were involved in it. So um, Jim is now channeling. You are speaking through Jim. And yes. apparently, uh, John was a very good channeler, too. Yes. So he was able to channel the information that comes through him because uh, I, 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 when in, in his biography, I noticed that uh, John and, and Paul were able to just um, transform themselves in the musicians, in, into other musicians on the stage. So when they played somebody else's music, they would uh, pick some, they would just transform themselves. They were, they were very, uh, oh, yes. In, 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 in channeling somebody else's personality. Absolutely. But I didn't, I didn't see it as channeling. I, th I saw it as acting. Um, but you see, I was very third dimensional. So I wasn't looking for that spiritual angle of it that, that you were channeling. I was looking at it as they were fabulous actors. They could do... Um, Buddy Holly, they could do uh, um, Jerry Lee Lewis or whatever his name was. They could do all, you know, all these uh, black artists uh, that were very popular in the United States and also in England. They could do them very easily and Bo Diddley and all these ones, they could just, they could almost act exactly like them. And people would go crazy over that. Right. So what do you think was that transformation? The humanity was transformed by, um, by Beatles and who followed after them. Yes. So what, what was the mission of, uh, of you guys? What was, the, what was um, I think it was divinely required. So you came and uh, performed certain function. Uh, what was that transformation that you do? What do that you did? You mean what I did to help transform? No, no, no. I mean, uh, as Beatles, as a group, transform yeah. the humanity. And initially, it was uh, sexual liberation, but I think it was much more than that. It was. It was much more than that. It was an emotional liberation. Um, they. Did you see the way the females would act toward them? They were emotionally distraught almost because they touched them. Not only were they good looking, but some of their songs spoke directly to their hearts, directly to their hearts. I want to hold your hand. Um, I mean, it sounds very trite to say that. However, that is what this generation needed. They needed to be touched. They needed that uh, visceral activities. They, the women especially were taken by them. Help me if you can, I'm, I'm feeling down. That's their job is to be uh, a, the, a positive reinforcement to men. That's the message of that time was that they were, they were to be helpful to their man. And the Beatles sang about that and about how women would be with them in a different way than it was being sung about before, with better harmony, better feeling, and better um, diction and, and thought process than it was before. They were very clever about how they put their words together because it was perfect for the time. It was emotional liberation, sexual li liberation, but it was also more than that. It was 
an identity. They had a new identity that was different than anyone else. They identified as uh, people that you could talk to and be with. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So um, after Beatles fell, uh, fell apart, uh, none of their Beatles were equal to what was done before. There was something missing. Even John, who created wonderful songs, still there was something missing. So uh, the impact which they did individually was much smaller than they did collectively. So the question is, um, what, hap what did happen on spiritual level? I assume there was some entity of Beatles which was pretty conscious and pretty powerful, which could act only through the group and not through individuals. Well, let me put it this way. Um, when you're collaborating, there's a different kind of energy than when you're doing solo work. And anyone who is an artist of any form and they're doing solo work, their solo work is representative only of themselves. And they're getting no ideas from outside. And as you are working together as a group, you get ideas from everyone who's there. You get channeled messages, if you want to call it that, from the energy that is right there with the group. And that makes the whole much greater than when someone's trying to do it on their own. They're not drawing in energy from anyone else. So when you are in a group situation, George would say something or play a bit on the guitar and they would go, oh, that's lovely. Let's work with that. You know, that could be the solo, that could be a bridge, whatever, you know. Um, but then they would all, they would all collaborate in uh, a very beautiful way. But that energy of the four of them together was perfect. It was a, a wonderful uh, conglomeration, if you want to call it that. I don't know, a wonderful unity between them that they, they formed eventually. It took some time, but as they worked together, they became so close and they could know each other's feelings and thoughts to some extent. Just as when you get married, you don't know your partner as well as when you, after a year, you know them a lot better. So, and you're able to collaborate with them or not. But this, this unity was very special. So did this unity have a, an additional spiritual name on the other side? Was it uh, an entity? There were entities that worked with them, but I did not know that. Not at the time. Um, in fact, I was very troubled at the time. Um, I fell in love with John, so I, I was like totally... I knew he was straight, and, but he was... It's so beautiful to me. I, his mind was beautiful. His thoughts were beautiful. I just, I couldn't help myself. But the thing is, it made me crazy. It made me absolutely crazy. But yes, I do believe that there were other beings working with them. Now that I'm where I am, now that I look back and see, there was other beings there for sure. Who they were, I don't know. So I could say that uh, the group of Beatles was fueled by your love. Absolutely. I love them all. Uh, uh, John, uh, John especially. Uh, but I thought that Paul, I actually thought that Paul was the most talented. But he also was the most cocky and jerky. Um, he, I didn't like his, the way that he... Uh, conducted himself sometimes. He would, he would be like, he tried to be the leader all the time. And, it, and I was saying, no, you're, you're not the leader. All of you are the leader. You are a group. There's not one person that should take over. But he would try to do that many times.
and occasionally John Wood, but not as much. Um, also, George Martin played a huge role in, in oh, uh, George. making it happen. Yeah. No, George was absolutely key. His productions, he heard things in there. He played some of the instruments, the piano bits, in some of their songs that made the song just exceptional. He was an exceptional, uh, he heard things in an exceptional way. And he actually, if it wasn't for uh, George Martin, you would not have the quality that you have on Sergeant Peppers or Abbey Road. Those, uh, his productions are just amazing. So I, I, I look at uh, Beatles as basically a group of six at the moment. It's like four Beatles plus you plus George Martin who created that, that group and the family and the energies. Yes. Oh, George Martin was definitely part of it. Yes. There's yeah. no... So um, part of that was uh, your weird desire to be um, sexually mistreated and John's desire to harm other people. I mean, at least... Uh, this, this, uh, mm, uh, so there was a match in here. You wanted to be uh, harmed, and he, he was the one who was harming. So that, yes. that also contributed to the harmony of the group. I think so. Um, yeah, it drove me crazy. He was disrespectful to me. Yes, there was no question. But I didn't mind that. I didn't mind it. I, uh, I saw it as he knew me so well that he could say anything that he wanted to me and I was part of his family and part of his um, essence. So whenever he spoke to me um, in a harsh tone or in a nasty way, it was almost like uh, he was part of my family, part of my soul, because he was being being very direct and saying exactly what he he felt. Uh, was there any alien influence? You know, I was not one that uh, looked for aliens, but I'm sure looking back that there was. I'm not sure who that was. You see, I was very far away from the channeling world, the 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 I was more interested in the money, the fame, the popularity, the uh, the quality. Those were the things that I was interested in. I was not really, uh, and I was into uh, I was also into the closeness, uh, uh, my proximity to the group. But I was not into uh, aliens or magic or anything like that. But I could see that there was something so different uh, happening here that it, it now strikes me as I look back that there was something happening other than what I, my mind could comprehend. It was, it was magic. It was different. It was uh, super, uh, super um, incredible the way things came together. Um, it, they just couldn't have come together any better than they did. And there was some influence with that. Um, you did yourself, did you have any alien uh, roots? No, I look back and I, yes, I did. I was Pleiadian. Uh -huh. But the thing is, I did not know that at the time. I was never awakened to uh, that kind of thought process. Uh, was was were you any spiritual? Did you respect Jewish spirituality at the moment? Of course, I was. I was Jewish, so um, but it, I had felt alienated by religion in general. Um, I felt that it was sort of a dead feeling around the Jewish faith. I didn't feel very alive with it. 
um, it did not seem to edify me in any way. So I really didn't do too much with it. I did practice at times with my families, you know, uh, different things. But uh, as, it, as it stood, I really wasn't very devoted. Uh, but you felt the mystery in uh, Beatles music. So that was, I guess, your way of connecting to the spirit. Exactly. And I did feel the mystery of it, but no one around me in my spiritual life, in my family life, in my, in my home life, uh, was able to really uh, enhance that. I sort of got that on my own. Uh, I got it from my parents, of course, and from growing up in, in, that, ch in that way, in temple. But I didn't, it, it wasn't reinforced after I became an adult too much. Possibly uh, there was a presence of the, a, a, lot, of, a lot of spirit was present in, uh, in Beatles. Oh, yes. So uh, maybe you just misinterpreted your attraction to the spirit as attraction to the sexuality. Of course. I was very, I was very um, sexual, very, very much. Um, and being in the position I was, I had lots of opportunities for sexual uh, advance. And um, that actually was a, a good thing and a bad thing because I became sort of a sexual addict. But I, at the same time, it was an empty experience. It was just, no one was, uh, I wasn't feeling love or I wasn't feeling uh, any kind of uh, feelings for these people, but for the group, for John and, and especially John, I was madly in love with him because he was what I wanted and I couldn't have it. I, you always want what you cannot have. And so that was a, a perfect example of that. I could have a lot of other men and they were very nice and they were beautiful and whatever, but the one I wanted, I could not have. So it was a very empty experience for me. But they, um, they didn't discover their spirituality back then. They, uh, they started to discover it after you, got, you were gone. Yes. So at the moment they were conducting the spirit, but weren't aware of what is happening. They were pretty much down, down. Every, we were very third dimensional, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. uh, interested in the money and the fame. Mm -hmm. Interested in um, all that that could do for us. Mm -hmm. And until later, later they became very spiritual, especially George. And, and I would say John as well. And um, John and George were most affected by uh, religion, I believe. And that's my opinion. So um, what was the way of your uh, leaving the body? Uh, were you killed, assassinated, or was it actually an accident? It, it was actually... They, they called it a suicide. Um, it was an accident to some degree. But in another sense, there was part of me that really wanted to leave because I couldn't have what I wanted. And I was a very selfish person. Um, and I wanted what I wanted. And if I could not have it, then I didn't want to live. And I said that to myself many times. But I really didn't think that I would ever do anything to harm myself. But I, eventually it was a, an accident, but it was also uh, had some intent. But I didn't really intend to kill myself, but it turned out that way. I was thinking that um, there was so huge money involved 
and power and uh, lots of so there could be some people who wanted you to go and the competitors yes. and stuff like that oh yes there could be there are attempts at uh murdering me you mean yeah um there were threats that i was mismanaging them but the threats were coming from people that wanted to to manage the beetles because they saw that they were heading straight up. They were not, do not pass go. They are going, they were launched. There was no way that they, you could stop them. It was a perpetual forward motion and no one could stop that. And they saw that and they were saying, they have to have a better manager, but I'm the one that helped launch them. So, and they were headed straight up. And everyone saw that. And so I was in the way of some of the ones that wanted to be me um, and be with a, a group that, that is not, not working too hard to go straight up. But, and that's what the Beatles did. They, they, when they hit the shores of the United States, it was obvious that there was no turning back. They were, they were it right now. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so it wasn't a, an assassination, it just... Uh... No, I'm sure that they, that some would have, after, uh, would have wanted to try to, but they, it happened so quickly, uh, seriously. Everything happened so quickly Nobody had a chance to, to uh, put a hit out on me or whatever you want to call it. They, yeah. they were just astonished and were like, we need, we need to get to these people somehow. We, but they didn't know, their minds were like very blown by the fact that they went straight up. They were like, how can we get a hold of these? But they couldn't. It was, too, it was already too far gone. I see. I see. Because you took the business from others, and uh, obviously the money were involved, and also it was even you shook the, the you shook the whole system. So yes, I, the whole system was shaken by the Beatles. It right. absolutely was. They were going. They were frantic because Shea Stadium, for an example, they had security all around it. There was thousands and thousands of screaming people pushing to get in to see the Beatles. And it was, they never had experienced anything of this magnitude or <laughs> they were dumbfounded. They, they were just absolutely, they didn't know what to do. They called more police. They called more police because there was all these people they did not expect just sort of pushing in. It was a dangerous situation, really, because um, they were really pushing to get in, and they didn't care who was in their way. These, so most of these women were just, I, they had to get in there. Right. So initially, you were targeting uh, female teenagers. Correct. And... Um, they were the ones who screamed. Oh, yes. But eventually, Beatles affected everybody. Of course. The reason for that is, well, they matured as well. It started off to be reaching out to the female population. They were good looking. They had a, they had a message for females. They were um, sexually charged. They had a great sense of humor. What woman would not like a group of handsome men with good sense of humor, with great writing talents and good lyrics. And, and uh, the expression that they, they gave on stage was magnificent. They, they knew how to bring each song through so that the, the women would just go absolutely crazy. So I, I was watching and going, how did they do that? But 
they they had a special magic to them. Uh, but as they matured, as they got even better, you see, that was the spark that made them know that there was something more to them than just a group of uh, a talented group of singers. They wanted to change the music scene completely, and that's what they did, with the help of George Martin especially. George Martin took their vision and made it crystal clear. They had a fuzzy view of it, but he took it and made it clear. He, he is actually the one that clarified their vision, and he is to be praised greatly for that. Yeah, John was, you know, it's one of the main inner conflicts of John that on one hand, they did the transformation. On the other hand, it was all fabricated. There was a lot of fabrication in the image of the Beatles, in their way they created the music. It was all fabrication. They synthesized it to be effective. And uh, he was looking for the ways to actually express himself instead of fabricating something which will be popular. Yes. After a while, John became um, dysfunctional with the Beatles in some respect, but so did Paul. Um, but in some way, Paul, uh, John was looking for a raw, a rawer sound, a, a more raw sensibility, a more real a more real sense because he saw that that the Beatles were they everybody looked at them as magical and as um, up here and floating around in some kind of la la land and he wanted to ground everything he wanted to bring it down and so he said he made several comments that were were well, actually taken out of context, but that people were really shocked by. But he wanted to bring some uh, different uh, conflicts to the band in, in some ways. He did enjoy that. Um, he did like stirring up some trouble. So like saying that the Beatles were like God or Jesus or whatever he said, but it, then that caused so much conflict. And, um, but yet it was a positive thing for the group eventually because he got to explain himself. So it, it, they were um, a very unique uh, blend. And John was the one that wanted to be grounded and more earthy. Uh, one more factor I thought was uh, an interesting factor was that they had a lot of sexual experience by the time they uh, went to America. Yes. So they were pretending to be much cleaner than they actually were. And actually they were some, in a way they were clean in a way, but they had so much uh, behind in Germany especially. Yes, the thing is this. They did not know what to expect when they came to the United States. So they said, we, we talked before we went, and they said, this is your image. You're clean cut, you're good looking, you have great songs. This is what they're looking for. They're not looking for the Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones are bad boys. The Rolling Stones are popular, but you are different. Your image must be different than theirs, otherwise you're just going to blend right in. So they took that to heart. They did not want to blend in. They wanted to stand out. So they got the clean cut look, they got the the, they practiced and got very good and very clean. Their sound was very clean, but when they got to the stadiums, nobody could hear them. They, they, over the screaming voices, 
it was hard to hear any of the songs. You couldn't, it was all you could hear was screaming for the most part. It was like, at least from where I was at, I was going, also, I was even closer to the band than some people. And that's all you could hear was females screaming. And, and they weren't, they, you could hear a little, bit, a little bit of music and that's about it. But they were, they were just loving the individuals in the band. They were absolutely loving them. They were sending their affection to them in the, the most incredible way that I've ever seen. Right, I guess it was a conversation. Beatles did their part and the public uh, returned. What, and so there was a conversation. And then and, they went to, yes, go ahead. And the shriek was the only way they could get heard. Yes. And when they went on to Ed Sullivan, that mm -hmm. was, that blew them all the way out of the water. They were so popular after that, there was no bringing them down for several years. I mean, even there was, there was a slight wane in their popularity after about six albums because people were just had enough of them after that. So they changed their sound and it was even better. It got even better. And so the people were amazed that they even got better and were improving and they, it just kept going. I should say yeah. four albums. First four albums, up to the first four albums, everybody was like, oh, oh. but um, then there came Rubber Soul and Revolver. Revolver and Rubber Soul were changed the world. Those two albums changed the world. Right. But I think they, the, the world changed and the Beatles changed in parallel. So they kind of did that dance together. It was a dance yes. between the world and the Beatles. Yes, absolutely. And you're right. There was some spiritual overtones. It, somewhere there was spiritual overtones and I could sense that, but I didn't recognize it as spiritual at the time. I just thought it was the it factor. The it factor is when someone makes, is just incredible and it's what they want. Everybody wants that. And mm -hmm. I was going, everybody wants this. It has the it factor, the, the do, the love factor, the, the acceptance factor, the, the sexy factor, everything about it was what the people wanted. Everything about it. The talent factor. Uh, yeah, I guess, I guess a, a huge, uh, impact was that it's not what they did, but what they did, uh, the selection that they excluded. I mean, there were so many choices where to go, and uh, I guess uh, oh, yes. together collectively, you guys did wonderful choices to what to exclude. Oh, it was very strategic. Oh, absolutely. I was, when, when I saw what happened when they came to America, I said, whoa, we have to rethink this. We have to go exactly where we need to, to get the largest population to be viewing you. We have to get into the biggest places, the most popular venues, uh, the, the highest recognition areas. No question. And that was a snap to do whenever everybody saw the revenues that were coming in from their first performances. And they said, sure, we'll take them. They even moved people out of the way to bring the Beatles in. <laughs> I was talking more about which, which uh, songs to exclude and which uh, images. Oh, yes. That was another uh -huh. thing, their, their song list. Um, yeah. For different places, absolutely. Um, but you know what, John and Paul and George and Ringo could feel 
what songs needed to be done. I would listen to their song list and go, perfect. Could you add this song or could you take this song out? And it was 99% there. They knew exactly what to do. They were very good at picking a great song list that just flowed and was exactly what the people wanted. And I would very, very rarely edit it. They were very good at it. All right. Um, my, uh, we are getting closer to the end of the time, but uh, my, I wanted to, we have like about seven minutes left. So my question is about your exit. Um, so apparently your exit precipitated the falling apart of the of, of the of the band and of the group and um, it looks like it was all divinely guided because i mean it was much better for the beatles to fall apart rather than to uh, to go down and lose popularity so they voluntarily basically chose to stop rather than than being uh, rather than lose so they won many times and then they never lost correct and they just chose to stop at the top rather than uh, lose and they would have there was a beginning of a decline right and but that decline was and they saw it they absolutely did they saw it they recognized it they weren't working together the way they did before. There was a lot of un restlessness. They all wanted to do their own thing. They, they didn't want to listen to each other uh, anymore. Um, it, was, it was time. They were getting, they wanted to settle down and have families at least for a little while and then start back up again, but they could never agree on anything at the end. It was very, very difficult for them. Paul and George were at each other's throats and, and uh, George and uh, Ringo were disgusted with them. They were like, we can't work with these egomaniacs um, because they both wanted their own ways. They both thought that their ideas were better and that it, it was just a mess really was very bad um and so they their last album let it be was not their greatest in fact many would call it their weakest in many ways um and that is due to all the inner struggles and fighting and george martin pulling it all together Pulling it all together, you had the idea of doing a rooftop concert and filming it. Because he saw that when they were performing, after the songs were already written, that was their best time. That is when they were at their best at that time, when they were performing. So he had them do the performance, beautiful, wonderful performances on the rooftops. And everybody saw them as still the Beatles and still the great and beautiful popular band that they were. But after that, they stopped. So I think maybe in addition to all these reasons, I think maybe the mission was complete. It was. Uh, because it's been forever changed. Forever, forever and ever. Because I think the energy they received, the, the love and the energy was, which was driving them was, the, was coming from their ability to help the world to transform. And yeah. by the time, I think 68, 69, the world started going in a different direction. And uh, there was not much more to do because it was a time of reaction, basically, you know, on all fronts. Yes. And when, the, when there is a reaction, you... You cannot help it, you know, you don't want to help it, actually. 
Well, also, yes. And they were blaming Yoko for interfering too much with the band. She was always at the studio, always at the practices and everything. And that's the way John wanted it. And Paul didn't like it. And it was, it was always a mess there. So, yeah. So you and Yoko helped to, to break apart Beatles. You by exiting and Yoko by coming in. Yes. So basically, Yoko replaced you. Yoko uh, actually was a little more verbal than you might think. She had opinions, and she would tell she would tell John her opinion, and John would voice it to the group, and they would go, "Ugh." So, um, yes, she was a factor. So, um, how much of the divine guidance was there? And, uh, you, and you coming out. I think that it all worked perfectly. I think everything happened exactly the way it should to make it what it was. If they would have continued, they would have gone downhill and they would have lost the impetus that they had all the way through. All right. And even their previous successes would, would be shadowed by their uh, downhill movement, right? Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, it happened to others. Yes. Because their exits basically places a shadow on their achievements. It's like um, Sting with the police. Do you know the group, the police? Uh, no. They exited when they were on top. And Sting became a solo artist and was very, very successful because when that band exited, they were at the top. Another, another example of that. I see. So um, was the timing of your uh, exit from the body, was it predetermined? I believe it probably was. They haven't told me that. But as I look at it and the stream of consciousness that flows through that whole era, I believe it was. Mm -hmm. What's you working on now? Oh, I do many things. I, I'm, I'm still a producer in many ways, but I do other things as well now and I learn I'm learning many things, but music is always part of my life, always, and will always be, as well as John. John is here with me, and John and I are good friends. And George, <laughs> and now George Martin. Wow. We're all together. We know each other. We, we uh, hang. We hang together, if you will. Say hi to all of them. You're welcome. Yes, I will. All right. Uh, so what do you think about modern music? There's some of it that's very good, but most of it is contrived from the past. There's very little of those that are taking chances with new sounds and new ideas. Uh, but it is a, it's going to come Rock and roll will change again. So I see it coming. Oh, wow. So what do you think about modern sexuality? Um, I don't have much of an opinion. It's, it's been the same for quite a while, except people are more um, discreet these days. There was a point, there was no, uh, there was little discretion uh, with the Beatles at times, but I see a, a great, a much more discretion at this point. I see. All right, uh, my time is over. I, I, uh, it was a pleasure speaking to you and uh, thank you for all your insights. You're welcome. It was a pleasure being here. Have a good day. Have a good day.